Namaste and welcome to my channel. My name is Neeraj and we talk about consciousness, applied astrology and a bit of spirituality on this channel. So I am grateful that you are here. Welcome. Um, I have been hearing about this economic crisis and what we could expect and people are getting a little worried about all of that. So just sort of creating a quick video around uh, what's the economic crisis that's coming up. Uh, how does that look like towards the end of this 2022 and early January uh, 2023. And what we could expect in terms of applied astrology, how can we understand it a little more. So I just sort of creating a quick video around that. And I have like 18 points to cover today quickly. I'll get started. Um, this is the slide deck that I've prepared. On the, on the right hand bottom that you see is uh, the natal chart. So I've considered kind of the 1st of January. What happens at uh, let's say 00, 00 hours, 00, 00 minutes and around 0, 01 seconds. So before I get started, I just want to give you all a little bit of um, a background of what has happened. Uh, so as you all know, I'm pretty much aware of that. 2008, we had this huge economic crisis across the globe, starting from the US leading into other countries. Um, so this background is very important to understand of what's coming up because history is what can teach us in reality uh, around expectations and I'm also going to try to relate it with astrology and give you a perspective around what we're going to explain, what we're, we can expect going forward in the forthcoming slides. So the uh, when 2008 economic crisis happened, uh, the dollar was obviously out of gold standard in 1971 as you know. President Nixon kind of took it off gold standard so there was no real asset or value backing the kind of money that United States has been printing. And since dollar or the US dollar has this hegemony across the globe, wherein for trade purposes people use that um, and they don't have a choice then to use that. Now there are countries and associations like BRICS and others who are working to find a work around, but so far uh, US has dollars has the strongest hegemony. Global economics, all the, all the banks were aligned. Uh, the central banks, let's say Bank of Canada, Bank of America, Bank of England on uh, Reserve Bank of India, Bank of Japan, whatever you want to call it, but all of them were aligned and basically the governments of those or the Federal Reserves or the governments started printing money. So the money was basically, um, that's what I meant by when I say thin air effect, the money was made out of thin air. It was just the printing money and then bringing about the inflation 2-3% let's say in states uh, on, on in terms of numbers and or developed economies and it was pretty much uh, larger like six seven eight nine ten percent roughly or plus minus any number it can go in developing economies developing the developed countries were printing money and essentially buying everything they have but it was like heavy on consumerism and we are seeing a more robust face of that uh, in, in the west today so what happened that uh, there was no real value created it's just that people started printing money or the governments and then the inflation just keep rising up and up and that's how the new businesses were created. So uh, in the sense that uh, when you obviously give free money to people by printing, they will tend to spend. So a lot of businesses came up. The good part was that uh, people got employed. Everybody was happy. They just were relaxing. The manufacturing was away from the West and multiple other global uh, countries. Uh, and it moved to China as we, as we know of today. And then that's where all the global manufacturing hub started. All the devices, anything that you see in your household is, was mostly made in China and all of that. So obviously that has a pros and cons. The pros were that everybody was happy. Con, for example, was that uh, some of the countries where they were not really um, grown up that much in terms of economies or living standards, if you will, uh, their living standards slowly started to grow up or become better and better. So that was again one of the pros of it. But in general, what happened that since there was no value and there was no money printing backed by any kind of gold or any, any real assets, uh, it was just like derivatives over derivatives over derivatives. So, you know, services business, technology businesses, and a lot of things that we have today, we may, were not required really, but businesses came up. So because of employment and everything, it, it was a smooth ride so far. But now what has happened is that time is changing and somebody has to pay for the overall you know, the real estate bubbles, the inflation, the hyperinflation that we are seeing and all of that. So this is uh, basically like a thin air effect, I would term it, in the sense that when you create no value and keep printing money, uh, you have to face the consequences eventually. Uh, so in terms of astrology, it is going to impact us a lot. What happens is that, let's say, when the God or the divine intervention or the planetary positions decide that 
they want to see a change and which is what uh, we believe I personally have witnessed that uh, in what is happening with planetary positions now how God has you know kind of made them retrograde a lot of them and only one or two really being forward motion and then so there's a divine energy which has been created I spoke about this in my previous uh, worldview video and Canada predictions as well in terms of astrology so that's the quick background around what has happened uh, why it happened and now somebody has to pay for it and usually it's the common man who is always at the receiving end the rich people usually get away easily from all this but the common man you know you have to pay the higher bills so on and so forth I thought this was give uh, this is very important to give you a brief background before I get started on the next slide because it's important to understand uh, where it is coming from so I'll move on to the next slide this is my predictions part so slide number one is if I, if I were to look at what's coming up in 2023, uh, we can obviously call it as an economic crisis, but more specifically, um, I will be covering 18 points. The first point is obviously the sources of income and means of livelihood seems to be challenged. There will be lack of domestic pleasure in the sense of um, you enjoying your comforts at home in general. This is valid across the globe and also uh, internal environment of any country uh, and multiple challenges to older people. So we see um, older ones specifically getting challenged around their life, how much they pay for the, their bills, their pension support systems, even the healthcare, uh, which is uh, which seems very challenging. So, um, you know, please take care of them, uh, and I know you will. But in general, uh, we see that those guys are going to be challenged a lot. So that's number one. Number two is we for this is very important, and there are some planetary positions which has changed recently. So let's say. 24th of November, uh, Jupiter went in forward motion. So there is a little bit of relief in terms of uh, all the blessings that uh, uh, Jupiter is going to give us, which is a good time period, but it is only for a short while. And then let's say 119 or 120 days from now. So March end, and I'll be covering more on my subsequent slides on that. Because of that blessings, there are good things that will happen to us. So it's like period of a little bit of relaxation and, and relaxation and calming down, which is good. But in terms of natural calamities, we foresee a lot of um, severe damages and destructions due to um, natural calamities, disturbance to the to the to the water reservoirs of this world, uh, like tides, and specifically around uh, the the land factor is getting disturbed, which is like we can see a lot of earthquakes or natural disasters, especially affecting younger children, educational systems, and the entertainment industry. Uh, and Mother Nature will of course be the cause of it. Uh, like I said, somebody has to pay for all the deeds in past. That's how the karmic cycle works. Uh, you you get what you want. You your actions are your outcome. So so that's happening. But but I wanted to. Uh, there's a little word of caution here in terms of the natural disaster or calamities, uh, especially the water system is getting disturbed. So you could see a lot of tide or disturbance from the oceans or flood and all those things and earthquakes are something which are also on the horizon so you can see six seven eight richter scale kind of things which is which is going to wipe out a lot of what we see today that's uh that's number two number three is the uh, the real practical knowledge of the world would increase that means the real source of truth would see growth and i predicted in my previous videos also that the religion studies or the studies of uh, all the books that talk about religion and all those aspects will be uh, of all time high in terms of sales and uh, it's also that um, uh, no matter how much ever the world knows since we also have a blessing from the planet Jupiter what's gonna what's going to happen is that um, despite of people will be able to see through things they will they will be able to gain the real practical knowledge which is required for them which is required for them to survive on ground so that is going to grow so that's number three. Number four is all the partnerships that will be uh, and um, relationships in general. It could be the business, your partners or um, just working with your colleagues would be very fruitful during this time period. Now, this is valid up till the end of March, like I said in the beginning. And this is but but the trick here is that um, the, the, the time is changing. Uh, we had Kali Yuga or let's say uh, the time for machines and uh, automation and the industrialization of the world. But right now the time is changing. It is mostly 
around the truth, the reality and things which have really the real asset value is only poised to survive and things which are out of thin air like I said in the beginning will not be able to survive. So in general times are good but it's only for the good people who have been doing by, by good people I mean the good deeds people who have done good karma and it could be like uh, the present life or the past life so that's how you decide your your own fate uh, so in terms of uh, and obviously the even the nations if there are nations and countries uh, in terms of worldview uh, or let's say when we applied astrology on top of the nations anybody who was really on the truth side of things or doing good to people or really being good then faking in public will be very will be able to see a lot of fruits from the partnerships that they had so far and, and even in the 2023 uh, year that we see. Uh, the fifth point here being the, we see some hope for the civil aviation, especially around airlines, the uh, international traveling. We could see a little bit of recovery in the Q1, it's a January, February, March of this year. And, uh, but, but there is a whole overall, it looks nice. So 2023 looks nice in terms of economic growth for the civil and aviation industry as such. The sixth point is uh, very important, um, and I see that there could be uh, there could be a lot of law-related reforms in some countries. Um, I don't know Canada in the West, U.S. I, I see, foresee there could there could be something disturbing the whole U.S. ecosystem starting from November, December, in terms of election. What happened? What were the results? Whether there was a foreign meddling? Uh, all of that could see a lot of trouble. And it could be this will happen up till 23 of January or let's say mid mid January early next year, and then specifically the uh, the legal matters, the changes and law reforms, if any, which has been pending from long in your country, will see light during Jan, Feb, or March time period, and could potentially help countries gain revenue, etc. So whatever they do in terms of reforms could help them be more business friendly or whatever way they can earn more revenue from it, but. But in the West, it could be a challenging times due to some law reforms. Uh, like I said, it could be in Canada, it could be in India and a multiple other uh, geographies as such. So that's point number six. Moving on to point number seven, which is around the time is really good for up till end of March to get all trade deals, uh, food security done. So for instance, if you were to stack foods, so anybody stacking food, could actually see some growth because of inflation. Uh, that's what we foresee in the charts because of the planetary positions that we see. And I call it applied astrology. I prefer to call it that way. So uh, since food security will be challenged uh, due to inflation that's that's coming up uh, early 2023, uh, if somebody is stacking up, could see potential inflation raising the prices up. And then um, uh, spiritually what is happening that stacking the food this time and uh, by mean by that I, I don't mean the freezer ones or the uh, the deep cold freezers that we have at home it's generally the the grains um, which is anything which is directly from the soil not the processed food uh, part of it anything which is directly associated with nature uh, that that is a very good time for food security or any kind of businesses which are in those kind of warehouses and all of that uh, they will see some growth but for a common man uh, the full security because of the natural the floods the earthquakes and the calamities that i spoke about that could be a little challenged as well but overall it looks a very good time period for trade deals to go through so if you were looking at some good decisions to be made um, around trade agreements your own growth and prosperity in the long run up till march is a very good time to do that um, the eighth point is the uh, housing part. Uh, there, there is a housing crisis and the real estate bubble, like I said in the beginning, since these are all created out of thin, thin air uh, without any value, like same house getting sold multiple times, say, different banks mort providing mortgage for it, different buyers buying the same thing. So it's like a $300,000 house will be like $600,000, $1 million, if you look at uh, Canada, Toronto, where I am currently living, is like crazy, and then uh, like popped up real estate bubble. I'm I'm guessing it's pretty much same in a lot of um, geographies around the world and all the larger big cities wherever we have economic activity as such. So uh, the time is good, uh, but in general, the housing is tend to lose its value after March, more specifically around April to mid May. 
then around june to uh, august i guess and then after october it's even more challenging times for housing so what happens is that housing will lose lose value uh, including milk production we see some challenges to the animals or cattle as well and uh, the milk production could be disturbed as well uh, in terms of shortage of it or whatever, or whatever you want to call it the necessary amenities and uh, internal wealth to the countries are also uh, we see that as a challenge point number 9 is around very very important point so this whole slide is about the impacts on jobs and i'm sure you will be wondering what's going to come so here it is the ninth point is you can expect major job losses as countries and more specifically the leaders of the world which is like the presidents and the prime ministers of the global economies especially g7 g20 the nato uh, and and other geographies as well included inclusive so they are trying to control them and keep them from going out of their countries of cheap uh, of cheap labor or let's say developing economies so mid april to mid may and december 29 to mid january and again august last week to september at the periods you can expect major job losses so what's going to happen here is that people are going to lay off like a fashion uh, the businesses who are really profitable or let's say they, they have money to really keep uh, employees on payroll since everybody will be doing it it will become like a fashion statement for um, for any uh, big tech corporate giants so, or big corporate companies or big or medium mediums won't survive anyway so uh, the big corporate giants will actually do it like a fashion so since somebody is doing it let me optimize it this is basically based on greed to save money certain dollars or salaries of the employees and they will lay off people which will not prove to be beneficial in the long run for anybody Uh, but for now uh, they are they are going to do it and these are the specific time periods and and of course it's going to be challenging because of that and uh, as a impact it will be obviously trickling down further on the economy activity so it will be like job losses would mean no spend and no spended no expenditure or expenses or people having no money will obviously try to lead to uh, depression or let's say deflation or uh, sort of recession would kick in so governments don't really have a lot of choice now in the developed economies or especially europe if you see the uk crisis that we are seeing it's mostly around if they continue printing money they have only two options you continue printing money we call it qualitative easing people would spend more so inflation would keep going up which will ultimately lead to recession only Uh, so god has kind of fast track this thing uh, by divine intervention so they are trying to sort of let's say in in canada if you see they are trying to raise the basis points or the interest uh, for a mortgage or any kind of loan that you take and this country specifically the developed world mostly works on lending like it's like a credit economy in the us as well so unless people buy things on credit the economic activity won't happen and let's say a 1 Uh, when when they spend a dollar 40 cents roughly go to the big tech giants all the big social media and the technology giants that we have uh, in the san francisco there so what happens because of that so in general what will happen is that now uh, if the job losses happens the recession was di- the recession would directly kick in and leading to depression and further disaster to economies around the world so that's point number 9 Uh, the point number 10 is uh, important one where the leaders of the world will try to bring in some relief programs or some assistance for the unemployed though i think us was giving 400 dollars a month or so during covid and the job losses canada have done this testing on ubs i call it or universal basic scheme or universal basic sorry ubi so universal basic income where they had a test around if people would anyway be out of job can we give them free money and um, i covered in my previous video around why not to come to canada kind of thing where i explained who how canada is a welfare state so you will see these kind of welfare programs or free money to people would basically grow out of no choice to the government this is the out of their own karma or the deeds that they are going to be- get this back in their life they don't have a choice so Uh, they will have come up with more welfare programs all the developed economies more specifically and then which will ultimately lead to more recession and more inflation so no matter what they do this is bound to happen in other words 
So the 11th point is the jobs that deals outside the countries, which is like any kind of import export jobs or let's say um, dealing internationally outside the country, technology or outsourcing um, or uh, processes and all of that. So anything which is outside this uh, your country may not be affected that much. So those jobs could see some relief in terms of uh, either no losses or some losses as compared to other industries in general. So that's point number 11. Point number 12 is again the same point. Outsourcing and controlling outsourcing would be the basic reason for most of the job losses. And developing nations seems like benefiting from this. So it's just like, like I said, it's a divine intervention, like a shift of a world power or change in world order that's destined and pre-written that we can see in the charts in terms of astrology. That's why I can say so with a lot of confidence. So uh, it's just that the leaders of the world, which are like the presidents and prime ministers or whosoever is leading that province or state will actually try to control, you know, I want jobs within my country, don't take it away and all of that. But now the time is too late because they did that 1971 mistake of there's no value backing US dollars. So they can print money and they have been printing and they still do it. So what's happening, going to happen is that uh, this control or, or outsourcing and what could go out of country will not work. And that will be fundamental reason, a very good reason of why all the joblessness will happen in the first place. So the 13th point is the leaders all the, at the same time will focus on internal job creation, which is a good news. And they will focus on the wealth and there could be internal uh, conflicts and anything that will need their domestic uh, attention in domestic matters. But essentially, uh, all the steps they will take doesn't seem like getting any fruits. So, uh, again, in terms of applied astrology series, uh, whatever they do may not work. Like I said, it's more like divine intervention. The 14th point is businesses that were profitable in past. Like I said, a lot of business was created out of thin air, like derivatives over derivatives, paper money, printed money, uh, and some form of assurance, this and that. So anything which was not really physical, tangible asset will no longer will be profitable. In fact, a lot of them will have to shut down and we have seen that over the last two and a half years of COVID and that was like nothing as compared to what's coming up. So just give you a hint of and perspective on the kind of volume that we are going to see in terms of economic crisis. Uh, there could be, um, you know, religious or military conflicts as well, as well and that would actually be the cause of uh, all this profitability declining. So expect something major around around that as well. A lot of debt can be seen with respect to, uh, you know, countries taking money from foreign countries. It seems like some sort of, this is not really coming out from the charts, but at, at the outset, it seems, seems like some sort of crisis that will happen internally that will require attention or uh, um, interference from outside world. Uh, so, this is a good news for globalization though, like I'm guessing, you know, oil supplies or uh, things like that, or essential goods and commodities could be one of them. But, but there's a definite help required from outside into your country and this is applicable across the world. So up till 20, next point is uh, up till October of 2023, people would realize the importance of working hard and keeping production in house within their country. That could uh, fast track deglobalization a little bit. In that a lot of uh, factories and production from China is actually moving to countries like India, Vietnam, or uh, some some part maybe in South Korea as well. So that's going to further improve. So that's good news for those countries. But um, for the developed economies, it could be a little challenging in terms of uh, you know this realization. But this will realization will sort of be completed around. Uh, October of next year. So this is again a challenging time for debt, uh, the diseases and there's a risk of warfare and conflicts again after October 2023, which is like a good significant amount of, uh, you know, patterns we can see in planets, which is like, there are high chances that uh, that can happen. And this again, the whole risk period between, let's say end of October and mid of 17 or 18th of January 2024, that's the time period uh, this is visible the most. So I'm just trying to cover the uh, events up to the end of uh, next year, which is 2023, uh, to, to remain on the topic. And again, uh, this I covered, but again, in general, gold can see ups and downs. It can go down a bit, March, April, May kind of thing, or June. 
and then it will pick up again stabilize but silver is poised to grow a lot there is some uh, demand for i see that silver will will be growing a lot similar things around lithium ion those batteries and everything that is also poised to grow on those lines so that's my quick uh, those are my quick 18 points around what kind of economic crisis is coming up uh, what can we see in terms of applied astrology and what can you do to be better prepared uh, this is just an uh, analysis uh, by logic i hope you like this video thanks for watching namaste